Today we're going to make a portfolio with a hard spine and uh, an inset. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a little gauge because I have to make a spacer for the, uh, for the board and its spines. So I have my board here and I've cut two strips. I'll just glue this together so I have a double thickness. And I have the, the inset size here. And I have my front board, back board, and my spine. Now, for the uh, inset, I need to have the board uh, being exactly the same thickness. So what I've done is I have a thinner, a thinner board here, a lighter weight, and then a very thin board from which I will cut the inset. And together, you can feel that they are the same thickness, so there won't be any difference in the final portfolio between the front and back board. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my inset and with a uh, ruler and pencil I'm going to draw a diagonal here to find the center. And then with my triangle I'm going to put a right angle right from the bottom through the center of the cross that I have just drawn. Now on the inset board itself I'm going to do the same thing. But because we have a spine that's going to show in the final piece, uh, in the final piece, I'm going to just leave the diagonal so that it is just about uh, a millimeter from the top corner over here. And when I draw the diagonal on this side, I will do the same thing, setting the uh, edge of the, the ruler about a millimeter from the corner. That way, I will be able to center the inset and it will take into uh, consideration the thickness of the spine which will show on the side of the uh, on, on the book. So now we'll draw a straight edge here. With a straight edge I'm going to draw the uh, center mark. And now I know how to center the how to center the inset simply by moving it along this line here like this. Now the client has given me a plan with a specific measurement for the height of the, or at least the top of the inset. So I'll take another ruler here and set it at that height. And I'll match up my center lines here and then draw around the inset. Okay, now when I cut this, I'm still going to use a straight edge, you know, here with this and my ruler. And I'm going to extend these lines so I can see where my cuts are going to fall. And I'm going to cut it so that I remove the pencil lines. This gives me a little bit of space in the inset for the uh, fabric to go down in uh, and cover the, the bottom of the inset space. And you notice that I'm using the right angle here and it's guiding my straight edge.
And this is our last cut. Didn't press hard enough here to get this all the way through. Yeah. There we go. And now we have the inset. So I'll take my thin board here now and I'll glue that out. and place the inset right on here like that line it up and press it down give it a little rub with the folder make sure everything's in place here And now we're ready to cut the material for the, the cover. So I have my fabric now and I'm going to trim it down to fit the needs of this portfolio. So I'll lay out the board here and the first thing I'm going to do is put it here and I'm going to mark it at about three quarters of an inch, about three quarters of an inch from the fore edge, the light colored pencil, and it's resting three quarters of an inch up. So I'll mark it three quarters at the top. Then I'm going to put the spine in with the gauge, put the next gauge on this side, wrap the board on it and mark it three quarters of an inch from here. I might also just sort of like mark a little starting mark on the fabric here with my light colored pencil. So I'm going to cut this, be right back. Okay, so I know this is where the front board is going, that's the back board, and the spine goes in between. So I'm going to put these up here, take the front board, and glue that out. Make sure that the uh, inset is all glued inside there as well. And center the board here on this side. And rub it down and get the inset set as well. So 
So you can see how the inset is looking now. Sometimes you have to poke a hole because there's a little bit of air trapped in the corners and I have a little needle here that I use like this to poke that. It depends on your covering material. This is fairly porous, but as soon as you poke that little hole, then all the corners can go in very sharply. Okay. Now I'll take the spine. And take my gauge, set that, line the spine right up to the top here. Give it just a little bit of room because you always need just a little bit of play space. You could also add extra fabric. If you just wrap this with fabric, you could also have a little bit more room. But since I'm only doing one, I'm just going to do it like this. So now I'll glue this board up. Put our gauge down again. Line the board up to match the top. Give it just a little bit more room by twisting it like that. And press that down. We'll turn it over. Get the air out. And we're ready to turn the edges. So, okay. We're going to cut the corners about a board and a half thickness away from the corner of the board itself. So you can see how this looks. It's about a board and a half thickness away for, for the cut. So we'll turn the head and the tail edges first. Put a little bit on the corners here. And I'm going to press down into these little channels first. I'll pull this board up a little bit tighter here. Okay. The fabric seems to want to stretch a little bit here. Okay, and then I'll just turn the corners in here. that and we'll do the other side this a little harder this way that way it's got a little bit of a pre-fold every material is a little bit different so you, you will just alter your methods for putting things down depending on how it behaves this is having, behaving pretty well compared to some of the other things I've had to bind with
now we'll do the porridge. The other side. Making, making a case like this is very much like making a case for uh, a clamshell box. You'll do the same kind of thing. You know, along with the with the joint and the uh, hard spine. Okay, so here we have it. And what I need to do now, since this is going to be a presentation kind of folio, is line the inside. So I'm going to cut a piece of fabric to fit inside, sort of like, you know, where the book would go if this were a book. But I'm going to extend the fabric from the foredge across the center of the spine. There's going to be another panel mounted in here by my client that has printing on it. And on this side, there will also be a pocket. So we will make a pocket for this after I get this piece lined up. Okay, here's a piece of fabric for the lining. So I'm going to set this in as if it were a book. And I'm going to take my scissors here and cut it just beyond the spine here. And then I'm going to turn it and I'll make a cut here so I know where to chop it on my board shear. Mm. Have to make sure I do it on the right side. There. Okay, that's the inset side. Okay, I need to get a piece of paper to glue this out on. Be right back. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's some paper. Put this out of the way. Okay, and now I can glue this out. Okay, now you'll find it easier to set this in place, that's my front board, if you put the book like this with the edges hanging over the edge of the table. Then you can pick up your glued fabric and you can see exactly where to lay it on your board. So I'll press this into place, then I can pick up the board and press this into the joint like that, rub it down onto the, the back board because that'll be seen, and then rub this into the joint as well, like that. piece down. Okay. There we go. And now we're ready to make the pocket. <laughs> I'm ready to start making the pockets. Uh, I have cut two pieces of board that are approximately an eighth of an inch thick because one pocket will be to accommodate an eighth inch of material and the other one will be for a quarter inch of material. 
Um, there is the front of the pocket, the back of the pocket, which is the exact width of the, the pocket. And then there are two pieces of twin tack. So to start, I'm going to take the covering material and with a pair of dividers set at about a half inch, I'm going to mark this simply by dragging down the edge of the fabric and giving it a little crease. This is going to fold the, uh, the, t the front edge of the pocket so you don't have raw fabric sticking out. And now we'll just glue these down. We'll just put these together like this. And glue these like that. Then I can fold like that and like that. You can do this with you know multiple fabrics if you have if you're making like lots of pockets. You can just line up about five or six of these things at a time and glue them all at once. Okay, now that piece is ready. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put a little bit. put it right on here, and just a little piece of uh, magic tape to hold it in place at the top, like that. And then I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to line this up first, line this up with the back of the pocket. And just take this one so it holds in place when I turn it over. Oh, I have a lot of fabric here. Maybe we should give that a little bit of a trim. Because this is pretty big. <laughs> I was on the wrong side. <laughs> so now I can line this up the right way because I want the fabric to be uh, let's see make this really horizontal here okay that's really supposed to be on the front so I'm going to line this up so I have the top edge of the front of the pocket on there like that and then I'll just press the tape in place so now I'm going to trim this down because it is an excess of fabric here. I had much cut it much larger than I actually needed. And I'm going to trim this just like we did before, but give it just a little bit more space. If you have a thicker pocket, you may have to like actually make a flap so you have a corner that you can turn around. But for this thin pocket, I think we'll be fine like this. I'm going to give this just a little bit of a score with a folder so it'll be easy to turn. And I use a bone folder for making scores like this. And then I'm going to glue this. Oh, I need a little paper here. I'm not going to worry about getting the glue right up against the board because the glue is really only going to go onto the uh, back of the pocket. And I'll treat this like a four edge, like that. Wrap this around. And then I'm going to fold these ends down 
inside like this, like that, so that it's nice and neat, and then bring this bottom edge around. Now before I take this off, uh, it's going to go into the uh, portfolio with a piece of twin tack. So I'm going to put a piece of twin tack right on the back here. And I've cut it so that it fits just inside. I think this is a little bit large. I'm going to give it some more trim. But I have to set it right up at the top edge of the fabric, like, you know, right there. So I'll peel off the first layer. And put this right at the edge of the fabric there. And then knock this down. So I can remove the tape. And hopefully slide this out. If I'm making a lot of these things, I generally uh, coat the pattern with a piece of packing tape. If you have packing tape on it, it gives you a nice slippery surface and things slip right on and right off. So here we have a pocket like this, and this can get mounted in here with the twin tack. So now we'll do the one with the, uh, with the double thickness. And again, I'm going to take the backing material, put this on here squarely, and hold it in place with tape. And I may have to trim this a little bit. And this one seems to be about the right size. Don't know how the other one got... Oh, no it isn't. <laughs> Lining it up. Okay, you have to line this up so that the top edge comes right around to the, uh, the backing material. And the backing material could be even just slightly underneath, you know, what would be folding around. But it still looks like it's pretty good size here. So hold that in place with just a little piece of tape. Line this up again. And this is the, oh, that's why it's, there. Yeah, that's why it's different. Okay. I've got two pieces of board here. I probably should just tape these together so they don't slide around. If I were doing a hundred pockets or so, I would have this, you know, all glued together and this would be mounted slightly differently. This would be mounted onto a board that I could slip the fabric into with a stop here. And then that would stop it and I could just sort of like go one right after the other. But since this is a prototype, I'm not setting up for mass production. Okay, now we do need to trim it. Try that again. Okay. Okay, now cut the edges here, and I'm going to cut these a little bit further away this time. Uh, I know what I'll do this time. I'm going to cut it with a little flap so you can see how to make like a thicker envelope. So, what I'm going to do is take one cut here and cut it exactly at the edge of the, of the uh, guide, like that. And then I'm going to fold this just slightly and make a second cut here. So 
So I can see the embossing in the fabric on this edge. I know exactly where to cut this with the scissors. And then I will turn this at a right angle and cut this little rectangle out. And then I will cut out this rectangle here so we have a little waste. Okay, now I'll show you here. So what will happen is the fabric will wrap around. This piece will fold for a neat corner. And then this piece will come around like this. And I won't have to glue this down. So, let's glue these. I'm just going to glue the edge of the fabric this time. And get the sides in first. Bring this up and around. Up and around. So we have a nice square corner here. Then we will fold these edges down like this so they're inside. You could even cut these a little shorter because they don't need to be as long as that. And then I'll just glue this edge like that. and do that. So now we have a very neat, you know, back on here and it's a thick pocket that will hold a quarter inch of material. So I'll take the twin tack again. First I'm going to measure it, make sure it's in the right place. Oh, it is a little long, so cut this off. Test it again. There we go. The important thing for this twin tech when this mounts is that it has to match the top edge, not so much the bottom and the sides. You know, so you have a little bit of give in making it fit. Okay, so there we are. Remove the tape. And the pocket should just come off with a little bit of effort. <laughs> I should have wrapped this with packing tape. It's a little stuck here. Yeah, I took the tape off. That way I can pull one board out and then the other one will come out easier too. Looks like some little bit of glue got on here. Oh, that's where it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we have our pocket that will hold a quarter inch worth of stuff inside.